When we create something like a 12 column grid in Webflow, then those columns can overflow past their parent like so, and the columns aren't always consistent widths depending on their screen size. Let's change it to a 10 column grid on tablet. Now to make these always be even widths, regardless of the content inside them, we would need to go to each column and manually switch it to a min of zero and a max of one FR. Once that's applied to all our columns, then they'll all be consistent widths. But if we take a look at the code Webflow's writing here, it's actually pretty long. And for each breakpoint, it's applying this one FR for however many columns we have there. Multiply this by the number of layouts we have throughout our site, this can really make things be bloated. So here we can apply this grid template columns inside custom properties instead. If we head down to Webflow's custom properties, let's set a grid template columns and let's go ahead and set a value of repeat. Here we can just tell it how many columns we wanna have. I'll say 12 columns and then I'll pass in a min max. I'll say, let these columns have a min of zero pixels, max of one FR. And now we have perfectly evenly sized columns. And if we take a look at the CSS Webflow's writing, it's much cleaner here compared to the version where it's manually repeated across each one. Now, if we wanna change this to be a 10 column grid on the next breakpoint, all we have to do is configure our grid and change this to a 10 column grid, and there it's updated. So instead of recreating the grid settings every time, we can create a grid utility that we use for all grids throughout our site. We'll set it to a display of grid, a one row, and we'll link the gap here to our grid gap variable we're using throughout the site. For the columns, we'll head to custom properties and add a grid template columns of repeat one. So it's a single column grid by default. Then we can add this on top anything we want a grid on. So I'll create a header for my work section. I'll call this work header and I'll add the grid utility on top. By doing that, it now applied my grid and I can configure this to be a three column grid instead. Now this is only affecting instances of the work header throughout the site. It's not changing the main grid utility. So inside this, I can have a work title div. I might set this to a width of 100%. Inside of it, I might have an actual title element. Inside my whole work header, I might have like a paragraph and I can grab the whole work header and align it to the bottom. And again, this is only affecting the work header. It's not changing the main grid utility. Now, if I want this title to span two of the three columns, I can give it a column span of two. The problem here is this is applied to an ID on the element. It's not applied to class. So if we had another work title somewhere throughout our site, it's not gonna get that two column by default. And if we adjust it to maybe be a single column or three columns on the next breakpoint, then we have to manually adjust every other instance of work title throughout our site as well, because these changes aren't linked to class name. So instead of linking this column count to ID, we can link this to class name by adding grid column end, and we can set this to span two columns. And now this is completely connected to the class of work title and we can change this freely across breakpoints. Just like we can create a utility for our grid, we can also create a utility for our columns. And here we might wanna add all the styles we could possibly need on a column. We'll have it span one column in one row by default and just start in its auto position, but we can change that per column. So on this work title, instead of having to apply this here, I can just throw on my column utility and now all these styles are set here for me. If I want this to span over two columns instead of one, I can just change this here without retyping everything. If I want this to start on the second column instead of the first, I can pass in start two, and now it's starting there. Or I could switch this back to starting in the auto position based on the number of items that come before it. So now let's create a basic bento grid. So we'll give this a work CMS list class, and we'll throw on a utility of grid on top. Let's go ahead and configure this grid and we'll change it to be a three column grid like so. Now inside that we'll drop in a div, give this a class of work CMS item and I'll throw on my column utility on top. Inside that item, I'll drop a card component. Now with the item selected, I'll go ahead and duplicate it. I'll give this first one a combo class of featured and on that I wanna change this to span over two columns instead of one and I'll duplicate this item again. For this one, I'm gonna give it a combo of tall, 
and I want to change this to span over two rows, like so. Let's duplicate that item again. Let's give this one a combo of last, and we'll set this one to span over two columns, and we want to change it to start on the second column instead of auto, so it pushes it over. Now, normally, especially for larger grids, like a 12 column grid, we want to reduce the number of columns on each breakpoint. Otherwise, the gaps kind of add up and they make our grid overflow on smaller screen sizes. So what we can do here is configure our whole grid and change this to be a two column grid here on tablet. Now, when we did that, nothing actually appeared to change. And that's because this last item is forcing our grid to be at least three columns. But if we switch this to, instead of starting on two, start back in the auto position, now our grid's allowed to be a two column grid again. Now on the next breakpoint, this can stay two columns, but on the next one, we'll wanna switch this to be a one column grid. Let's configure this and change this to be one column. And now we'll wanna change this item to only span one column as well. And we'll grab our last item here and set that one to span over one column, and now our entire grid can be a one-column grid.